This is Eric from Packhacker, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Chums Surfshort wallet, which I've been testing for the past year. If you find this video helpful, make sure you subscribe to the channel so we can continue making content to help you travel smarter. Let's dive in. So as you probably saw from the intro, we have two of these things. So this is my personal wallet that I've actually had um, from right around the time I started working at Packhacker. And then we have a new one as well to compare it to. So I've been using this as my EDC wallet for over a year now. And this is one we just got. And you can see on this side, there really aren't a huge amount of differences. My wallet that I've been using for a year is a little bit more beat up. If you move on to the back side here, you can see there used to be a logo here that, you know, a Chums logo there. And so that started peeling about, I would say six months into my usage. And once it started peeling, I think it would have lasted longer, but when I see something peeling, I just have to like peel it off. And I think it actually gives the wallet a bit more of a minimalistic look now, because there is no logo on there. Um, but we also have, you can see, sorry about that. You can see the zipper is very chipped and kind of tattered, but no issue overall with the zipper's performance. It does look pretty tattered, but no issues with it you know popping open or anything like that and that would obviously be a big deal on a wallet there are a few loose threads but they're they're pretty minimal and a couple small just like rough patches but overall very happy with how this thing looks but moving to the inside one of my favorite things about this wallet is there is a key ring on the outside and when you want to get your keys you can just go like this and they pop out and then you can stuff them back in there but this ring comes with the wallet and then you just attach your keys on there. As you can see, I have four different keys and then a bike key as well. And those all fit inside there nicely. Depending how much gear you have stowed inside, it might be a little bit harder to get those in or out. But for the most part, I have not had an issue with that since I've owned this wallet. But, and that, we'll move to this side actually. We have this little TPU window here, which makes it so you can see your ID. So if um, you don't like pulling your wallet or your ID out of your wallet, you can just show people to like, oh, if you want a beer or something, you can show them, there's my birth date. Uh, sometimes you will have to take it out if you have an ID that needs to be scanned. Um, but overall, happy with the window and it is a bit roughed up. That's going to be kind of hard to showcase, but it's just kind of gotten a little bit cloudy. But if you go inside there, there's actually a little divider in this pocket. So you can see the divider there to separate the ID window from the rest of the compartment. So typically what I do is I have my ID there and then in the rest of the compartment, I put cards I use a lot. So I'll have like a debit card or a credit card. And if like my insurance card, if I know I'll have a doctor's appointment coming up, I'll slide that in there. So if I do have to pull them all out to see what they are, it's really easy to just um, figure out which one you have because there is no you know staggering to this wallet. So you kind of have to like flip through. But moving to this back pocket, these two pockets are actually about the same size, but because of the divider and the TPU in that front one, it seems a bit smaller. But in this one is where I throw all of the cards that I want to have with me, but don't necessarily need all the time. So if you have like gift cards or something like that, you can see I've got quite a few stowed in there, but before I pulled it out, you couldn't look at them to see what they were. And I actually always have my, this is the fob to get into the building here at Packhacker. And I always just have that on top and it works through the material here because this is just a thin uh, ripstop nylon. But something to note is that if you do have your keys in there, you wanna try and place the fob somewhere where the keys often aren't. And normally when you slide them in there, it kinda like goes away from it just because there is shared space there. But if there are keys on top of it, it might not open. But one of the biggest things I do like about this wallet is the two uh, different compartments and having the ability to keep the cards I don't use very often, but want to have on me away from the stuff that I do use all the time and want to have quick access to, you know, not hold the line at the coffee shop or getting gas or be able to show my ID quickly. So when it comes to packability, this is a very small wallet, even especially for how much you can fit inside of it. I have it compared to my phone here. So this is an iPhone 11 with a case on it, and it is obviously smaller, or I should say about the same width, a little bit less wide and obviously quite a bit shorter. Uh, but something I think is important to note is that it is pretty wide. So if you have really, you know, like tight fitting pants or you have a small pocket, you might feel it a little bit in your front pocket, but that also comes in handy for if you um, constantly put your wallet inside, inside a liner pocket, either on, you know, a, a sling or a day pack or something like that, because that little bit of width normally gives it the, like, gives it the width, I guess I should say, to hold like elastic and stuff like that. So it's not bouncing around. Like with a small metal wallet, I've had them come out of the pocket. But that little bit of width, especially if you have your keys inside there, makes it so it doesn't bounce around. And it can feel a little bit snug inside of some pockets, as I said, but overall very comfortable either as a front pocket wallet or a back pocket wallet. But if you have your keys in there, not super comfortable to sit on. 
So I wanted to do a comparison to a similar sized wallet and we have the Kanken card wallet here. And as you can see, it is very similarly sized. It does have a little bit um, of an edge, I guess, size on this side. But when you put them you know, stacked on top of each other, they are very similar in size and width. So the main difference obviously is that all of your access point to your gear on the Chum Surf Shorts here is on the exterior. So you have these two zippers and then obviously the key area here. But you only have just this one little slide pocket here on the exterior of the Kanken. And when you open it up, that's where obviously all of your, um, most of your stuff is going to go. You're not gonna put a ton on the exterior there. Um, so here you have, these aren't, these look staggered, but they actually both go to the bottom. So your cards are gonna sit at the same height. And that might seem like a negative to some people, but in comparison to when you put cards inside of the main compartment or the, the bigger compartment, I should say, on the chums, you can find your cards a lot easier here because you can kind of like fiddle through them because it's open so wide. Whereas with the chums, you really just kind of have to pull them out or just get really good at knowing which colors are which cards. So that's a, a perk of the Kankin, I think. And then you also have this little change pocket here. And I guess you don't have to put change inside there, but something that the chums doesn't do super well is with coins. They tend to kind of get stuck in between cards. And if you're looking for like a quarter for a uh, buggy at the grocery store, it can be kind of hard to find one. So that's a nice inclusion there, but it also feels a little bit like a waste of space if you want to be able to put more cards inside the wallet. So there you have it, the chums surf shorts wallet. Thanks for keeping it here at Pack Hacker, your guide to smarter travel. We'll see you in the next one.